Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to be back doing another kind of quick fire video again. So I did before my five full fragrances that are kind of like safe signatures. Today I'm going to come with five fragrances that I'm going to be personally wearing this fall. Those last five, I'm sure I wear all of them, but they weren't really my personal selections. They were more just suggestions for kind of safe signature scents. So check that out if you want. Today I'm going to be talking about five fragrances that I personally will be moving to the front of my shelf for this full autumn time and you know I, I know that I can depend on them every single time so for that reason there's going to be ones here that should be here that perhaps aren't like for example Tom Ford Oud Wood, Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille both of those I love uh, and I will be using this full but you know they're, they're for me they're not kind of go-to like dependable fragrances so these are just going to be today like my personal kind of I suppose dependable fragrances that I know that when I want you know I don't want to think about it too hard I know that this is going to perform in this situation I'll grab it so these are going to be at the front of my shelf okay so to start we're going to be doing an honorable mention I'm not going to go into this too much Ter Demers you know I already made a review for this I put it in my last one you can hear all about it it's for me, it's an amazing fragrance, it's a masterpiece. I will be wearing it this fall, I will be pushing it to the front of my cabinet. I'm not sure how much though, you know, the last 10, 11 years, I've kind of it's turned into a stale relationship. Uh, I love it to pieces, it's very comfortable, it's comforting, but it doesn't excite me so much anymore. It's, it's you know, it, it, but it is dependable, it is a faithful, so I wanted to include it as a personal mention, as a kind of, yeah, like just, just a honorable mention in this list, but, so Terre d'Hermes, it's going to be there, but it's, it is what it is. So let's get into the meat of it. The first one that I'm going to be pulling forward off my shelf, Monotheme, black label leather. This is a cheapie. This is the just kind of the first and, well, not the only cheapie, but the first cheap, kind of cheapie on the list. Monotheme, black label leather. It was available in Marks and Spencers for a while uh, and then it's kind of disappeared. They're an Italian brand. It's not discontinued. You can find it around on the internet and if you can find it on the internet, it's incredibly cheap. This cost me 12 pounds. And what does it smell like? Most people say this is a dead ringer for Tom Ford Tuscan leather. I don't know, I've never smelled Tuscan leather. I bought it because I was like, hey, that's dead cheap for a leather fragrance. I'd give it a crack, leather and smoke, why not? What does it smell like? It's leather smoke and there's a fruity note in it. The fruity note lets this down a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit synthetic and a little bit vague. It's kind of like a mix of almost like a fruit cocktail rather than in the Tom Ford Tuscan leather you hear a lot about the black currant note. In this it's more of a just kind of a vague fruitiness uh, and it does kind of let it down but otherwise this is an amazing fragrance at that price. In fact this is really good and at that price it's bonkers if you can get hold of this say i think it's i don't think it's discontinued it's just a little bit tricky to find you can definitely find it in europe and i'm sure you can get hold of it in america as well but for the price for a leather that's dark smoky warm rich this is fantastic and that's what you're getting you're getting this rich kind of resinous leather with a real kind of dry ashy smoke which is really nice and then on top of that you've got this kind of fruit accord that just kind of lifts it up a little bit and it's just gorgeous it's a really nice scent monotheme black label leather when am i going to wear this well you know for me this is a kind of a dress down scent i i kind of tend to wear it just when i've gone to some jeans maybe kind of not far off what i'm wearing now you know, but just dress it down when I'm just doing casual things like going out to like gigs, things like that. I wear it then because it's it's kind of dirty, it's kind of rough, it's kind of it's it's rugged, it's 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 not it's it's a kind of more playful scent. So that that's kind of when I'm going to be reaching for this. I think on those kind of days, maybe on kind of cold, muggy days as well during the daytime, you can definitely wear this. So that's when I'm going to be reaching for this the most. Okay, next up, this is going to be my refined choice. So when I want to wear something that is refined when I'm going out, when it's, you know, to, to sort of dress up and be wearing probably more or less most of the time if I want, you know, if I, if I don't want to think about it too hard, Linston de Galan. This is just 
a beautiful fragrance. What can I say? It's, you know, it's a classic. Everyone knows all about it. It's lemon on the top with coca and uh, patchouli. It's powdery. It's a little bit medicinal with the anise, which I'm not really that keen on, but it fades quite quickly. Um, People say this is sexy. I don't think it's sexy at all. I think it's far too refined and rigid for that. I, for me, like a fragrance to be sexy, it needs to be a little bit more playful. This I think is quite rigid and quite refined. Uh, it, it's definitely only doing what it wants to do, but what it wants to do is absolutely brilliant. And that's why I'm gonna be reaching for it. You know, when am I gonna be wearing this? When I need to go out, when I wanna dress up, things like uh, dinners, anything that really requires a tie or you know a shirt and a pair of shoes that that's you know this is going to work for that this is definitely a refined scent i'd say a lot of people wear this in the daytime that's fine i'd wear it in the daytime but i don't get the sexiness for me this is far from sexy it's anything but sexy it's it, it, i mean it has a kind of classy refinedness to it that i suppose you could call sexy but I wouldn't say it's sexy in that playful kind of jiggy jiggy kind of way. It's more sexy in a, I guess, kind of, hey, I'm a refined, sophisticated gent, I, I guess, if you find that sexy. It's cold, it's warm, it, it, it's sweet, it's kind of sour. It's, it's just a postmodern classic. It, it, it smells like a classic fragrance. It's, it's like powdery, medicinal, but at the same time, it's got this chocolate sweetness underneath it, and it just keeps it playful and brilliant. Say so the anise in this, I'm not a big fan of the anise, but it does fade away quite quickly. The more I smell this, the more I enjoy it. When I first ever got this fragrance, which is, this is my second bottle now, when I first got this, I felt like, oh, you know, that's a bit old manish. I'm not too sure about this and I wore it just the first time and it sits very close to the skin, which is another reason it's good for those kind of refined, sort of classy affairs when, you want, when you're dressing up, because you don't want to beast mode it in something like that. You're just going to come across as crass and crude. So, you know, it's good for things like that. Get back to my story. I first sprayed it and I didn't like it. I thought this is not what I was expecting. I was expecting this like sexy chocolate and it just wasn't that at all. I would say it's definitely not a gourmet, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, I wore it and I thought, well, what's, what's the fuss with this? And then I, I kind of lost the smell of it. And when I lost the smell of it, I immediately felt like, oh, you know, I, I want to smell that. And I was sniffing my arm like, yeah, this is amazing. And then I'd catch wafts of it and really enjoy it. And then it would kind of die out. And, and I'd, as soon as it would die out, every time I felt, I want to smell that again. And that kind of subtly made me realise this scent's amazing. For autumn, I think it's really nice because it's got that warmth. Uh, it's got the kind of the anise, the patchouli, the chocolate the, from the coca bean. Um, you know, what else is in this? Rose, jasmine. It's, it's a gorgeous scent. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic scent. And I say this is going at the front of my wardrobe for when things like I have to dress up, put a shirt and tie on maybe, look a bit classy, do things which are a bit refined. This will be the scent that I'll be like mostly picking out. Okay, so third on this list, this is another kind of quite classic, I guess, but La Lique en Noir. Now, this scent, you know, if you've seen my Terre d'Hermes review, I said that, that uh, Jean-Claude Elena, he, he did a master stroke with that orange note by making it bitter and, and I said that uh, you know if it didn't have that orange note Ted Dermes was kind of just about ready to kind of jump off a cliff into a kind of dark pit while Uncle Nar doesn't have the, the orange note to pull it back Uncle Nar just says you know what go off that cliff Uncle Nar smells like it dug into the heart of her like Ted Dermes ripped its heart out, wrapped it in a rag and then carried it off to the forest and set it on fire. The whole place is absolutely incredible. If you like woods, if you like vetiver, this is incredible. When am I going to be wearing it? I mean, who knows? Who cares? This fragrance doesn't care. It's just 
unapologetic in its rawness. It's incredible. It's just, it's smell, it, it's so good. It's uh, me personally, I love vetiver and that's pretty much the, you know, the, the dominant note in this. It's basically icy, super, woods, vetiver, nothing else, have it. And it's incredible. For this time of year, it's amazing. Say so it's not the easiest scent to wear. You know, I kind of made a bit of a joke out about when am I going to wear this? Well, actually, I don't know when I'm going to wear this. I tend to sort of pick it up on those rainy days, on those cold days, and mostly sort of when I'm casual at home. You can definitely be dressed up, but I tend to, when I wear this out, I feel sometimes like I might be being a little oppressive. It's incredibly strong. One spray of this will fill a room. Um, so you have to be careful with it. And it's not everyone's cup of tea. So I, I get a bit self-conscious wearing it sometimes because I'm aware that perhaps not everyone's really into this. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's not the easiest fragrance to wear, but I tend to wear it sort of casually on like real muggy kind of cold, damp days perhaps. And that's mostly where I'm gonna be wearing this for those kind of sort of semi-formal or, you know, smart casual or casual wear. I will definitely be looking at this and if it's rainy and a bit muggy and a bit cold outside, 100% on Crenoir, fantastic fragrance. It smells like death, amazing. Fourth on my list, another fragrance from Guerlain. This one, L'Homme Ideal, Eau de Parfum. This is, a lot of people say it's a, uh, a gourmand. I don't really see that. It's got like an almond, cherry and vanilla, big amounts of all of those. There's rose in there and there's bergamot off the top, which is really interesting accord in this because it kind of hits that cherry and it makes like a fizzy spice. Um, uh, but you know, that, that soon dies down. You lose that kind of fizziness when you spray it. To be honest, when I spray this, it smells amazing in the bottle, but when I first spray this on my skin, I'm not too into it. I, I, I want to leave it a few minutes to, or you know, 10, 15 really to let that kind of fizziness zip away because you get this kind of bergamot cherry mix which kind of fizzes and people, I've seen it described as like Dr. Pepper or Cherry Coke and, and, and when I read those descriptions, I was like, yeah, whatever. But actually, I sprayed it and I was like, geez, it's, it's actually Cherry Coke, it is fizzy. And I, so I'm sure that's the bergamot and the cherry and the vanilla, all the way they kind of mish, mash together makes this kind of fizz. But once that bergamot zips off the top and you've got like, like you're essentially left with a cherry vanilla kind of slightly boozy frag and then as the time goes on i'm actually wearing it right now i've got the dry down but this is this dry down's about four or five hours and it's just incredible and it's sort of turns into a, just a very subtle close wearing refined classy it's i mean it's galan what do you expect a lot i mean it's a departure for galan in many ways but it's still kind of that classy refined galan you're left with say like a, a kind of almond cherry with a very kind of just an incredible vanilla underneath and it's just soft it's cozy it's warm it's sexy it's just a great so when I'm only wearing this, this is mostly for sort of evenings out, dates, um, dressing up, dressing down, but mainly for the evenings when I'm going out. I will wear it in the daytime as well, for sure, especially on cold days, cold, fresh days. I really like this. Um, but yeah, mainly things like quite intimate stuff. So more like uh, in intimate kind of casual things with friends or dates, things like that. I just think it's a beautiful fragrance, but it's very cozy, it's very warm, it's very friendly. So that's the sort of things I'm going to wear it for. Not so much, say, when I'm going out, dressing up, tie, shirt, and it's things are very formal, I'll be going with Linston de Galan. That's a lot more kind of, for me, that's a lot more formal. Uh, uh, Midial, it's a little bit more playful, it's a little bit more fun. It's basically, for me, these two fragrances kind of share similar kind of uh, setup so I'll be using them roughly about the same sorts of times uh, but when things are a little more formal I'll be going with Linston de Galan when things are a little bit more playful I'll be going for Long Medial so that's kind of where I'm working at with those two so that's 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 Long Medial it's a beautiful fragrance it's uh, it's a if you like Gourmand you'll probably love this I don't think it's necessarily a gourmand. For me, a gourmand wants to conjure up something I want to eat, and I don't really want to just eat a plateful of 
like almond and vanilla. But it's, you know, it is a, a, a beautiful fragrance. And if you do like Gamonza, I think you would love this. If you don't like Gamonza, I'm not massive into them. I think you'd still love it because it is just a fantastic vanilla almond, really. And, and I think you can get with that even if you're not into it. Last on my list, it's just a split. I uh, did like a three-way split with a couple of friends. We do like, when we do blind buys of niches and such, we kind of tend to do this. I got, so I got a 25 mil of Parfum de Mali, Leighton. Incredible. Now, why is this coming to the front in full? This, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, Parfum de Mali, this isn't Parfum de Mali, this just smells like a designer. Well, I think where they're coming from there is it's like, quite sweet it's got a little bit of spice it's got that pepper and it is a very easy to like fragrance for a niche it's probably one of the easiest to like niches you're ever going to find uh it's got mass appeal definitely and it's a hundred percent coming from those sweet spicy you know oriental designers that are mass appealing it's a hundred percent where Leighton's coming from difference is Leighton does it so well is so refined. Now me, I don't actually like those overly sweet, overly big kind of beast mode fragrances. I don't, I don't tend to wear them. I tend to stick more with like Galan and things like that that sit a little closer. And you know, if things are beast mode, I'll wear them, but I'll just dial back on my sprays because I'm not really into that big kind of scent cloud. So, you know, Leighton is quite a departure for me because it's, it's, it's like, I'd smell those sweet designers and I'd think, yeah, I, I can I can get with that. I wouldn't mind wearing that when I'm out, perhaps. But it would always be overdone or kind of sharp or harsh or too big or too bold or too brash. Well, with Leighton, it like takes that idea of the mass appealing designer and it just does it to perfection. It just does the fundamentals incredibly well. It's so well blended that it's really nice, sweet fragrance, but it doesn't get cloying. It's got that pepper on the top, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't stick out and stab you in the face. It's just a fantastic fragrance and it's just gorgeous. When am I going to be wearing this? Pretty much as my full signature, to be honest every day almost if I can get away with it I would wear it I would obviously get bored after a while switch things up that's why we buy like decants of things day in day out and that's why I can't really give you a kind of true this is my full list because my full list would be changing all over the place so these guys these are my kind of full fundamentals and Leighton is top of that pile for me it's going to be you know where is the others are quite situational you know i've got my kind of like sexy dates nights with the kind of long the hour i've got my kind of linston de galam for my kind of more refined stuff when i want to dress down and kind of just be a bit grungy i've got monothene black label leather and i've got uncle Nar for when i want to just wear on Crenoir. And then Leighton, you know, it's just an all time favorite. You, I could wear this, say, every day, never probably get bored. It's a gorgeous fragrance and it's gonna be, I don't really tend to have a signature. I say, you know, we're like these sort of fragrance lovers. We kind of, we buy, we sell, we trade, we're constantly changing things up. But for me, Leighton, I will be getting heavy use. So I bought this as a 25 mil split. We just split like a 75 mil three ways. Blind bought it. I wasn't really, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I like Parfum de Mali. I really like Herod. I, you know, I really like Nisian. Uh, I thought, you know, yeah, go on then. I'll go blind on it. See what it's like. And I tried it, and it's just incredible. So I'll be buying a full bottle with this 100%. As soon as I can get through this 25 mil, I'll be buying a full bottle, and I'm gonna wear the hell out of it this autumn. So that's my kind of five plus a kind of honorable mention with Terre d'Hermes fragrances for this fall. It's things that I'm going to be wearing quite a lot of. Say it's it's hard to give these kind of videos and say, oh, these are my five full fragrances because, hey, you know what we're like. We, 
say, I, I'm going to be, you know, most of these will probably be sold in a few months and I'll probably really buy new ones. I'll keep hold of some of them. I'll keep hold of like Long Medial. In fact, I'll keep hold of all of these. I don't sell that much, but I'm going to be buying new things in constantly. So it's hard to give that, but I know for sure that these are going to be like stapled, nailed on, pulled to the front of my wardrobe because they're going to get a lot of use. So these are my sort of full dependables, I guess. Cheers for watching. If you're bang anything in the comments, let me know. Like, subscribe, dislike, thumb down, thumbs up, whatever you like. Cheers for watching. See ya.